Welcome to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, John Barker. John's been my regular guest. We wouldn't have Legislative Updates, but for John Barker, taking the time when he gets done with the uh, legislature in Topeka, he'll stop by and uh, we'll film a program because this is the most accurate and it's the most timely information that we can put out and we've got inside information as always because you're right there. You're in committees, you're in uh, uh, hearing and seeing everything going on behind the scenes, you're in contact with all the people and you have been doing this now for this session for how long now? Hundred and yesterday was 101 days. Okay, and a normal session would be how long if it ended on time? Uh, by the Constitution, it's 90. 90 days. But okay. we could extend that if you do not have an appropriations bill and a tax bill, mostly appropriations. Okay, and you don't have an appropriations bill yet? No, we, we've had a number of other things. I think we mentioned last week the three items that we needed was our school finance, we needed a tax bill, and then an appropriations bill, or the appropriation bill and the tax bill to pay for it. We were able to get the, uh, the uh, school finance out this week. Uh, I voted for the bill. It's a, it's a good bill. It's, it's, uh, we worked hard on it all session. Uh, we've had a budget committee school, uh, K through 12 budget, and we've had uh, the committee on education working on it. Uh, we debated it for four and a half hours on the floor. Uh, so it was late at night. Uh, well, that wasn't. That was, uh, we got it in the afternoon, five o'clock, six o'clock. It passed, I think it was 82 or 87 votes. So that's a good margin. Uh, it was bipartisan. Some Democrats voted for it, uh, some Republicans. Uh, some wanted more money. Some wanted more regulations. Uh, some wanted less. So it was a, it was a compromise bill, but it, it's a good bill. And it, under the bill, see, I saw some figures. Was it how, how much money was added to the school? With under this program, it looks like about $180 million. For one year? For one year, and then the following year, they project it could be another $100, um, $100 $150 million. Okay. And I know from our prior conversations on the show that uh, this is a situation where the Supreme Court says more funding is needed, but it doesn't give you the amount of funding, and the legislature has to determine that. That, that's correct. Uh, the adequacy, they said the present system was not adequate. They had no adequacy. Uh, but they never put a dollar amount in. Uh, they've adopted the Rose standards. And this is, you know, one third of the kids are below the line, two thirds are above the line, uh, doing well. One third's below. And we had to develop a, a formula that would help the, uh, the, the risk factors uh, uh, that we would pay more for. For, for that one-third primarily? Well, no, it's going to go across the board. Okay. Uh, but uh, bottom line is uh, the at-risk children, the free, the free lunches, free or reduced lunches, that's a factor. Oh. Uh, so you would get the base, state-based aid on each of the child, and then if they have other risk factors, that would increase uh, based upon the percentages for that type of... Okay. You've got uh, second language. You've got just a number of different... Uh, you know, uh, autism was in there. So there's a formula that's in, in place for that. Now, has that gone to the Senate? The Senate uh, last week was working on their own educational plan. I, you know, I'm going to be critical of the Senate for just a second, as uh, I sometimes do. We started ours the first day of session. They started their educational plan about two weeks ago, started having hearings on it. Uh, and it, theirs is different. Uh, they look at maybe putting a tax on utilities to pay for the education. Uh, what will probably happen, they will take our bill, they may send their bill out, and then we'll go to conference, and from conference committee we will uh, uh, come to a compromise, hopefully, and hopefully the governor will sign it. So if it, if it goes and uh, goes into committee at the Senate, comes back to you guys and it goes into conference? Right. They'll, they, exactly. They'll take our bill. They'll, they'll amend it. Uh, they'll come back to us. We'll non-concur. It'll be in conference. That's when the Senate uh, uh, chairman, vice chairman, and ranking member, or whoever the Senate president should delegate, and then three members from our side, and then they'll go in and, and uh, discuss it and see if they can work out a compromise. I know I've heard you say multiple times that what has to happen is that school finance has to get resolved. Once that one is done, the other 
bills that are associated with it, which would be uh, appropriations. Appropriations and tax. And taxation. And so once the school finance is approved, then the others are going to fall into place very quickly. I think they will. Um, you know, school finance was, was the, uh, I think we'd mentioned the, the elephant in the room type of thing. Because they didn't give us a, a figure, an amount that we needed. Uh, that was a legislative function, and I agree that they were correct when they made that decision. However, uh, now that we've got this down, some will argue that it, was, it's, it will be found unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Others will argue, I think it meets the constitutional requirement, but only the Supreme Court knows, and they'll do their deliberations and then render a decision of whether we need to come back uh, or if it meets the criteria uh, or the constitutionality then uh, we'll be in good shape. Good, good deal. We're going to cut away and take a break. You're watching Legislative Updates with John Barker. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with John Barker from the uh, Kansas Legislature, the 70th District. And, John, thank you for taking time out of your day to on your way back. I know you've had a long week at the Legislature, and you're on your way back home, and thank well, you for really stopping by. Well, I've really been home. I came in last night. But I came over today. That's the reason you see no tie. No. Oh. <laughs> well, I could have loaned you one. I've got That's a couple right. laying around here, I suppose. But tell me what goes on now next week. What happens? Okay. What, what are you anticipating for bills that are being working their way through? Uh, yesterday was, of course, day 101. Uh, the, we had budgeted for 100 days. Uh, so we're a little over that. But we adjourned yesterday, which is an unusual move at this point, for four days. And we're going to, because of the holiday, that means the legislators don't get paid. Because uh, it's an adjournment. It's an adjournment. Right. We reconvene uh, Tuesday morning. I would anticipate Tuesday morning we'll be taking up a couple of issues. And, and just because we're not in the chamber, uh, working bills does not mean other things aren't happening. There's negotiations going on all the time. You know, I, I'm in the speaker's office all three or four times a day sometimes, and uh, so are other members trying to work out a, a tax bill. Uh, but next week, uh, on Tuesday, I go in. I, I've got a conference. In fact, I've got a conference committee at 10 o'clock uh, Tuesday morning with the Senate Ways and Means uh, over a bill that has to do with rules and regs. Uh, then we will probably, at some point in time, put some bills above the line, which means we'll, bills that will be debated that day. And we will take some time. And one of those may be a gun bill. Uh, and one may be a bill on... Uh, well, there'll be a CCR. Uh, there'll be another bill on maybe extending the time, the effective date of the amusement park bill that we passed earlier in the year. The one for the inspections? The one for the inspections. You know, a little girl passed, was killed in a yes. accident, tragic accident down yeah. in uh, Wichita. I heard that. But the Secretary of Labor, because the cutoff date or the effective date is 1 July, she would like to have that extended out until January because a lot of the cities cannot get those inspections done in that short period of time. And so we're going to run that on the floor of the House, and if it passes, the Senate will concur. And uh, that will extend that to January, give them more time. We've also got uh, the tax bill, and probably the last thing will be the appropriations bill. Hopefully we will be out by Thursday. And the appropriations bill, once you have the, the tax bill taken care of, it's, it's a matter of dropping in figures primarily. Right, the, the, the bill is basically drafted or on computer. But you have to put in what, what your, 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 we would put in our income. What are we going to get? Our revenue. And then from the revenue, the number is just going to fall in on what you can spend on each of those uh, departments and, and agencies. And I know from uh, John, what, uh, because I know your work ethic for it, but when you, when you say there's four days off because of the holiday and then you go back Tuesday, I know in reality what you do is tons of reading for all of this material, and sometimes you're doing outlines and preparing questions for committee and those things. I know there's a lot of work that goes into this. There is, and as Doug, as you well know, you never ask a question that you don't know the answer to. No, that's to. right. You try not to ever ask that you <laughs> don't already know the answer to. Uh, but you're right. And, and the negotiations with the Senate, it, it's done in public. The press is there, the uh, other folks, uh, lobbyists and whatever, interest with their interest are in the room. So you sit across uh, the table and actually debate the bill and what you will take, what you will offer. And on occasion, one team or one side will say, when we need two minutes or five minutes, we step outside in the hallway. The three of us will then huddle and say, okay, where are we at? 
what do we want to offer or do what, what do we want to take back and then we'll go back in and you know, it's, it's a it's a long process yeah 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 a lot more to it than, than people think what, right. what's the issue with the gun bill the gun bill uh, as you know a few years ago the bill was passed that opened all public uh, hospitals uh, college campuses uh, nursing homes uh, mental health centers uh, to conceal carry under the Second Amendment. Uh, it becomes effective, and other, uh, other parts of the bill became effective earlier. This was one of the la last parts, and it becomes effective 1 July. So there is a move to either extend it or to continue the moratorium forever uh, for hospitals, nursing homes, and mental health centers where you can't carry a gun into those facilities. Well, it would seem logical. Uh, the Second Amendment, uh, some folks that, uh, that are big believers of the Second Amendment uh, are, are opposed to any because they, you know, they've just lived through the Obama administration and prior to that the Clinton administration where uh, they were treated pretty shabbily. So they think that one move, they may lose their guns entirely. That's not the case, in my opinion, here. This is just... Uh, allowing those hospitals not to put up all the security, which is very expensive, like the airport, right. before you go into the right. hospital. So, and of course, their argument is that the sign itself does not keep people from carrying guns, and I understand that argument. But I think eventually we will come to, a, to an agreement with the NRA and, and, and gun advocates that we will be able to get this passed. You, you would think, I mean, common sense would tell me, you know, people that are at the mental health facility, why they may be struggling in some areas and they need some help, and adding a firearm into that mix may be a tough deal to do. Yeah. What, where are you at with the uh, health bill? Because I haven't heard much about it lately, except uh, the negative things, not so much in Kansas, but on the national level. Well, the, the, the Medicaid expansion is out. I mean, it was voted on, uh, so it's, it's no longer on our plate. I know Dan last week mentioned that they could bring it back. I think because we spent so much time on, on uh, school finance, uh, on the tax bill, that it will be for another year, and then it'll give us time to see what the federal government's going to do. I have heard on uh, the news about uh, some of the insurance carriers just dropping well, clear out of it. That that is true. Under the uh, under the uh, ACA, uh, I think it was the Kansas City Blue Cross and Blue Shield uh, dropped out this week. And so they have no carriers that are accepting it. Wow. And, and, and that, I think that was predicted a few years ago because uh, the premiums, uh, they're losing money. I yeah. think they lost $100 million. Yeah, that's what, that was the figure that I heard, too. Yeah. Well, we're going to cut away. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to uh, take a look, John, at some of the pending work that's in front of the legislature. You're watching Legislative Updates. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with guest John Barker from the uh, Kansas legislature. He's the 70th district representative in this area and have been for a number of years. And John, I know you're 101 days into a 90-day session, so it's it's still going. And I know you're on the Kansas Sentencing Commission. What what can you report into that area about, um, I'm sure you have access to prison reports, the numbers, and uh, and I know I've heard some probably in conversations with you about the juvenile funding bill and how that affects uh, the reality of the courtroom system. It, it does, and uh, well, when, when we adjourned yesterday about 11:30, the, the legislature adjourned. Uh, I get to, I went and had some lunch, and then I had to go to the sentencing uh, Kansas Sentencing Commission meeting, which was scheduled at 1:30. Uh, we met over the Jayhawk building, and you know we have a number of people on that committee. It was created to be able to control somewhat the prison population of the state. Uh, and that's when sentencing guidelines, as you, I know you're very familiar with sentencing guidelines for right. judges. But uh, just to get an update, you know, we've got, uh, as of April, uh, we had uh, 9,729 uh, prisoners in the Department of Corrections. Uh, that was down about 96 from the month before. So our, our, our prison population is basically staying pretty close. In July of 16, it was 9,663. Uh, this April, it was uh, 9,790. So we're, we're doing a pretty good job uh, of managing that population. Uh, it's expensive. Yeah, I bet it is. And That's almost 10,000 people. Right, and we're talking about uh, 
building a new prison. I think we mentioned that earlier. Right. I, I've asked them to look at Dickinson County as a possible site for a future uh, prison. I know I spoke with the city manager of Harrington. He'd love to have one down in that area where they actually build it. Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But then we talked about uh, a couple of last year we passed a, Senate, a juvenile bill, 367. I think we've talked about it before. We. The Department of Corrections assured us they were going to put $20 million aside for community services and those juveniles because they'll not be locked up under the Department of Corrections. So there would be a savings there, and that savings would be transferred over to, out to the communities for, uh, for uh, uh, parole and probation so they can have some services. And now they're finding that maybe that's not going to happen. That the $20 million won't come into the... Right. Wow. Um, I was, it's expensive to keep kids, uh, it is. anybody in and jail. And if we're keeping them out of foster home, if we're keeping them, you know, the best solution is sometimes, not all the time, is to serve those juveniles in the community that they live in instead of trying to move them to another community uh, in foster care. So we're, uh, I've talked to the Judges Association. We're going to meet again next week to see where this money is and why it's not going to be coming back to the local communities and the local community corrections and or probation so that uh, those kids that aren't in a facility are receive, receive services in the community. What will happen if that 20 million doesn't come back into that fund? How will this affect at the local level? And well, as far as 367, it restricted judges on uh, placing kids in custody. So those kids will not be placed in custody. They'll remain in the community, but, and then they'll have no services. Uh, so, I mean, that's not a good scenario. Not a good it? scenario. Mm -hmm. wow. So hopefully that, uh, that will change. But uh, uh, I understand the Department of Corrections is, is, is uh, their budget's tight, but that was the agreement when they passed 367. I was not in favor of 367 when we passed it. We'd, I thought we needed to implement it slower. And uh, by some of the reports, half the committees that they were going to create haven't even been created yet and yet it's effective as far as judges are concerned they have to follow the guidelines so that's uh, one of those things that uh, we will have to wait and see how it plays out I will talk about the big tax vote last week if that's okay sure Senate Bill 30 uh, it was a tax bill that we took this past I think it was Tuesday night it went down I it was it was interesting uh, we had a tax bill earlier in the session, I think in February, that the governor vetoed, and uh, they did not override his veto, so they brought this bill back. And this, had, this spent 35% more than the previous tax bill. So if, if, if it brought in, I said spent, it brought in 35% more. Uh, it was a, uh, I guess some people talk about flat taxes. I think this one was referred to as the fat tax. Fat tax, the huh? Fat tax. <laughs> Uh, and, I, and it was voted on by 53 of my colleagues, 68 to include me, voted against it. Uh, but I'd get, I'd received some um, emails from some of my Democrat colleagues asking me, or constituents asking me to vote for it. And my response to them was, there's 20 Democrats that voted against it to include the minority leader. Even he thought it was too fat or it wasn't fat enough. And I'm not sure what he would like, but... Uh, it was a big. That's a good response. It was a pretty big tax bill. Uh, we're going to work out a tax bill uh, this next week. Hopefully, it will be it will meet our needs, uh, and and have about a fifty million dollar surplus left over, and uh, and we can go on and hopefully uh, will not hurt businesses and will not hurt families. In this bill, you were considered rich if you if a couple made sixty thousand dollars, because then you were in the top bracket. Um, so I always worry about when they talk about tax the rich, it's how you define the rich. Yeah. In this bill, if, if a couple were together and each of them made $30,000, they were rich. Rich. They paid the high bracket. Hmm. And that's one of the reasons I couldn't vote for that. Yeah, I was looking at that conference committee report brief on Senate Bill 30, and, and, and I saw some of those figures you're talking about and the same thing. Boy, that's a lot of tax that's going on. Somebody that's, you know, not making wouldn't be what we would consider to be rich. No, no. Just a good working couple. Yeah, just a good hard working couple that's exactly. trying to make it all meet. You put and, your mortgage and, and everything the top, else with They it. were in the top bracket. Yeah. So, Where uh, do you think that one's going to wind up? 
Oh, this one's dead. <laughs> but uh, I mean, when you get uh, get the Democrats and Republicans voting against it, it's, um, it's yeah. I, I think yeah, it's you, dead. you got one there. Um, We're going to cut away. We're going to uh, take our final break. We'll be right back. You're watching Legislative Updates with John Barker. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with, with my guest, John Barker, from the 70th District, straight from the Kansas legislature uh, by a day. And, John, we were talking about that amusement park bill. And I remember you saying before, and, and most people didn't realize it, I certainly didn't until you told me, that um, there, is, there was no supervision, no inspections for the um, rides. We take our little ones, our loved ones out and put them on until at such time as there was a disaster, and now there's a requirement for the inspections. Uh, we passed the bill that becomes effective one July of this year. Now there has been some concern that that may be too quick. So there may be an, uh, another bill brought that would extend it out to January of 18, uh, because there's a number of, of those parks and or city owned by the city or 501c3 or three out in Western Kansas that can't get it done in time. Uh, so that's something I think this will probably take up this week, how it will uh, how it will turn out, I don't know, but that'll be an extension. And that's a necessary one. There was a recent death for that one uh, again, yeah. I saw. You've been watching Legislative Updates with John Barker. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Hope you have enjoyed this segment of Legislative Updates with John Barker. I'm Doug Thompson with special guest John Barker. Tune in next time for another Legislative Update. Thanks for watching.